Hi, good morning. <clears throat> I apologize. We've been having problems with the sound. Apparently, we recorded a bunch with no sound. Hopefully, this one will have sound and you'll hear me. But you may not, so we'll have to see. <laughs> what did you say? Um, so we're on page 238 <clears throat> of the Mystery of History, going over the women's fight to get... Um, voting rights and we said in my last one which I thought was super important because I was stepped up on my soapbox but I'll give you a brief one sentence um, summary which is that the feminism or this big push for women to have equal rights is was a result of the church failed to properly demonstrate how to love women and to dim well not to properly but to demonstrate how to properly love women there we go and because they didn't love women well the world took up the cause and because the world took up the cause to give women the equal rights well the cause swung to an extreme and uh here we are now with the world fighting for uh people being able to choose whether they will be a male or a female against the will of God. Okay, that was a brief summary. I won't step back up onto it. You'll have to decipher my words through the silence of my last video. Okay, so just now we were talking about the parade and Inez Milhall, no, sorry, Milholland. Um, despite, and then um, also that that the women had been attacked and the police officers just stood by. So despite the first parade, there were more parades and more women joined the fight. Understandably, but sadly, the American movement divided again in 1914 over just how militant the women's movement had become. There was a more moderate group and they were led by Carrie Chapman Cat. That's three C's in a row. She organized women to work by to work state by state. So I guess they're going state to state, while Alice Paul and Lucy Burns continued to fight on the national level. In DC. That means overall throughout the entire country, but probably close to DC because that's where a lot of the national laws are made. Well, all of them, but um so neither American group realized Oh, what they neither realized was that World War I was about to bolster their cause. That means to give it support, as well as the cause in Europe. So the war started in 1914, and thousands of men went to the battlefield. This was an opportunity for women to demonstrate their worth. That's a sad statement. They should not have to demonstrate it. The church should be demonstrating it in, in, in just every way possible. Okay, I won't get back on the soapbox. I think they helped because they didn't want the world to be taken over by the uh, Germans. Um, and everybody else. Who was, the, wasn't it the Axis powers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this was an opportunity for them to demonstrate their worth in the workplace, and the value of their vote. In America, they had pickets, day and night, and there appeared to be progress. But then during the middle of the war, the war, the tide of the movement made a fierce turn. Picketers made a banner calling President Wilson a Kaiser. This was in reference to the war in Germany, where Wilson was supporting democracy for the German people, but ignored the voting rights of the women at home. So he was, so what they're saying is, this was, okay, the jabbing banner provoked riots and led to arrests of thousands of American women. So what they're saying is, President, you're over there saying that they should have a democracy and that people should have voting rights, but over here, 20 million American women do not have the right to vote. That's not a democracy, my man. <laughs> um, as a snapshot of these events, consider the details of November 15th in 1917. It was that night 
that was known as the Night of Terror, 33 women were assaulted and put in jail because they had picketed the White House. Mary Nolan was a 73-year-old woman, and her, she had a bad leg, and she was dragged by the guards to jail. That would be like dragging Granny. I think I would be fierce. Granny already hurt her leg recently. I bite her throat. Dorothy Day um, was also hurt very badly by... A gar- uh, by um, a guard and Doris Lewis was thrown so hard into the, her cell that her friends thought she had passed away from the throw. I mean, Alice, isn't men are getting a little fierce. I mean, not I, a little fierce. I mean, not a little fierce. Very violent. I understand that they may not agree, but that's not an excuse to go throwing women. Just Don't because women are weaker, that doesn't mean that you take advantage of that. In fact, it means you stoop. You carry the woman. You don't drag them. Toast. Alice Kosu. Um, well, I'm not, I can't go into all these. I'm trying to say them as delicately as I can. Alice Kosu also fell ill because of the experience. Now, Lucy Burns, was who we talked about just a minute ago, was sh- uh, shackled with her hands above her head for the entire night. And then they removed her clothes and only gave her a blanket. That's abusive, humiliating, and dangerous for your limbs. I don't know. Hopefully she didn't lose too much blood flow. Now, before we leave 1917, let me, she says, Miss Hobart says, let me insert an entirely different story. Okay, go for it. In 1917, the communists were taking control of Russia. It was during the Bolshevik Revolution. Vladimir Lenin, that was their leader. He wanted women to work outside the home so to build a more industrial nation. So he didn't fight women over voting rights at all. He gave them this freedom in 1917. But of course, there was only one party to vote for. The Communist Party. <laughs> You're sure you can vote. You have the Communist Party to choose from or the Communist Party to choose from. Let me give you a good candidate. Me! But it was progress as far as Soviet women were concerned. Now, back to the timeline. The British suffragettes finally won their right to vote in 1918, but they had to be 30 years old. I bet you the men didn't have to be 30 years old. Age restrictions existed for several years, but it was still considered a victory. Um, This increased outrage in the United States about what was going on in the American jails. Ordinary grandmothers, sisters, friends, and teens of mothers and daughters were being sent to jail for months, where they were then put in solitary confinement, filthy conditions, and force-fed. In addition... Most of them were not given decent food. They were not given privacy or to- toiletries, which is essential during a mama's mama time. Books and writing or writing supplies. It's now, called abuse. Let's say there are writing supplies. It means that there's they are putting them in solitary confinement. There's no one in there but them, and they have nothing to occupy their time at all. That'd be different if if it. Sometimes they'll put a a person in solitary confinement if they've been. Uh, violent to the point of um, like they can't control themselves and if you give them any type of thing they'll they'll put like put them in there for like 24 hours to kind of like calm the situation down Um, now there's a lot of abuse happening in prison I don't want to say say there's not but there is Um, but here they haven't done that you know you can't give a a prisoner a pen uh, a pencil who's going around trying to hurt people at all with anything possible now let's say even if no we got to keep going uh, fortunately these brutal conditions were not a waste because stories of these this barbaric treatment was circulating in the u.s and president uh, wilson was practically forced to support the women's right to vote in 1918 well that's sad that you were forced to do it I'm pretty sure that I read that President Wilson actually agreed with her. Well, um, 
we have to see where you read it. After even more arrests and more arrests, let me see, because he didn't support it one year before. Um, we'll have to look into it because it says for so I mean it may say that he gave a speech supporting it, but that might have been his. He was forced to do it. More like he was under so much pressure, he was like, "Okay, I support the women's right to vote." I don't know for sure, but so then Congress followed in 1919, and after more campaigning, a majority of the states ratified that means approved the 19th Amendment, and this was in 1920. This gave them the the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied. Or abridged. Abridged means what? Um, I do not know what that means. To deny the right to vote means you can't vote at all. But if you abridge the right to vote, it's kind of like what they did in Britain. Like, you have, you can vote when you're 30. Oh. I'm going to abridge it. I'm going to make it a little less than what is already the right to vote. You can vote on issues that concern the household. Which dish soap should we use? You can vote on that. That type of thing. You already voted on that. <laughs> um, no, they mean, never mind. Okay, it saddens me that most of the pioneering women, and she, that's Miss Hobart speaking, not Julia, uh, who started the movement in Great Britain and the United States did not live to see the victory of their very difficult work. She says she suspects that they would be encouraged to know that their work was spreading to other nations. In Canada in 1927, the famous five, that was five influential women, including Nellie McClung, they joined together to ask the Supreme Court to define the word person in the Constitution. The women wanted to clarify whether or not women were respected as persons and eligible to hold office in the Senate. The answer to their question was no. So the famous five got to work, meaning they said, no, you don't count as a person. Um, That was just weird. They said it to their face. The thrust behind this is, in fact, the devil. The devil hates women because Jesus is the seed of a Woman. woman. That is what he's called in the Bible. He is the seed of the woman. Um, the famous five got to work on the campaign for women's rights and within two years they saw the victory with the person's case of 1929 after Canada it, uh, she says the right to vote was hit or miss across the world depending on the values, religions, and customs of the nations some results would surprise you for example, large parts of South America gave women the right to vote in the 1930s but France did not do it until 1944. Whoa. Africa allowed most women to vote by 1960. She says Africa as if Africa is a country. Africa is not a country. But I know she knows that, that Africa is not a country. That's a continent. I think she needs to get tired of Africa. Yes, I'm wondering, like, do they have, that makes me wonder, do they have a, a huge council that's for the continent, the nations of Africa? Um, women did not get the right to vote in Switzerland until 1971. That is very soon. That's just a few years ago. Kuwait only just recently gave women the right to vote in 2007. What? But in Saudi Arabia, the women still do not have the right to vote. It's a male-dominated Islamic society. So the next time there's an election, remember the long, wearisome fight of the suffragists who worked hard to include women at the polls. Their fight was not easy, but Ms. Hobar thinks the suffragists would be encouraged to know that many women not only have the right to vote, but some of them hold public office. Okay, we're going to stop there. Hopefully, I pray that you can hear me on this one, and it's not just silence. Okay, goodbye.